Anderson, nice hands. Drives up, score. Cardinal Nation, this is Noah with the daily announcements. Security is starting to ticket vehicles without a parking permit this week. Please have your parking permit displayed through your windshield. If you do not have a permit, please park in the $2 daily lot to avoid parking violations. Parking violations are $15 each. This week will be the college and workforce visit during lunches in the cafeteria. This week, today will be Hamlet University and St. Thomas. Here are a few reminders about the lunch process. The lunch lines is moving a little slow. Please remember to have your lunch number or the Student View app on their personal devices open to speed up the process. Another reminder that CRHS is a closed campus, meaning that students must remain on the campus for lunch and students are not allowed to order food into the building through restaurants or outside vendors. If you're trying and ordering the delivery, Drivers will be turned away. After a hiatus during, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Coon Rabbits High School is saying welcome its third Hall of Fame class in September of 2018. CRMHS enshrines its first ever in dust, and this year's class features two former standout student athletics and one former teacher and coach. CRHS Coon Rabbits High School will recognize this year's Hall of Fame Introduction in the ceremony on February, September 24th. Introduces will be honored at the ceremony with friends and family in the Sierra A. Coon Rabbits High School cafeteria at 5 p.m. before being recognized at halftime of the football game against Rochester High School. Kickoff at Friday night game is set for 7 p.m. Today we recognize Mark Hondu. Mark graduated in 1975 after a successful multi sports career as a student. Athletic Honduras was the captain of the baseball team in 1975, where he earned all conference and all state honors. He was selected to play in the Minnesota Lions All Star Baseball Tournament. His senior season, Honduras earned all conference honors in football in 1975 and earned the Dan Clink Red Scarf Award. He was also named the Coon Rabbits High School Student Athletics of the Year in 1975 before earning a scholarship to play at baseball at the University of Minnesota. Well, that's all the time we have today, Cardinal Nation. This is Noah, and it's a great day to be a Cardinal. Hey, Cardinal family, it's your Cardinal Captain, Tatiana. It's your girl, Camille, here. It's Grace, here. And we're going to just tell you guys a little bit about this new thing we have going on. Tatiana. Tell them about it. All right, so on Thursdays, we're going to be wearing our club sport or activity that we're a part of, the t-shirt, we're going to rep the wear. So this could be marching band, tennis, or the chess club, whatever you're a part of. And you know, show up to school, look like a baddie, take some pictures, and just, you know, promote your club. You know, Link Crew, you got a Link Crew shoot shirt here. Whether you're in choir or volleyball, wear it. Or National Honor Society or cheerleading. Wear your shirt. Wear your shirt, Wear your shirt baby. baby. Yeah, y'all. All right, peace out. That's all we got for you today. Have a great day. Remember, it's a great day to be a Cardinal. We just may throw a surprise or two at you. Fear the beard? There will be a few takeaways from this edition. Ones you want to celebrate with your teammates and all of your friends. It's in the net. Sports night is next. First conference victory of the season. Rookie coach Janine Crooks getting her team pumped up before they take the court. Some good things for the Cardinals early on. Solid serve, receive, and turn here. Bella Bresnahan gets the kill in the middle. But the Cougars control the scoreboard most of the night. They set up in their middle. Big power right here from Linnea Swenson helps Centennial to a 25-11 victory in the first set. 
Cardinals down early in the second, but trying to keep themselves close. Michaela Wilbur gets the kill from midcourt. She had a team high 14 digs to go with three kills in the match. Unfortunately, the Cougars keep coming like a freight train. They can attack from midcourt as well. Cassie Sosinski finds the floor. It's another 25-11 Centennial win in the second. Cougars trying to close it out. Cardinals fighting to stay alive in the third. Centennial attack is picked up. Amelia Fredrickson getting the kill in the middle for the Cardinals. That's actually Chloe Hoffman. Coon Rapids able to keep it a little closer in the third, but not able to break through. Match point, Centennial comes up with a big stuff on the attack by Bresnahan. Cougars take the third 25-16, make it in on their home turf. Bengals bringing the pressure in the first half. Gerson Caballero down the right wing gets off a strong shot, but a diving save by Luke Rising keeps the game scoreless. Late in the half, you can Harmon using his speed down the wing. Draws the defense, sets it up for Yaya Sidibe, and Yaya doesn't miss. One touch to the back of the net, and the Cardinals get the, the break up 1-0. Harmon just takes over in the second. Off the corner kick, Harmon gets the handle, finds himself just a little bit of room, spins and scores. That gave Coon Rapids a two-goal lead just over five minutes into the second half. Bengals looking for an answer. Jack Moore able to get it to a good spot and fire on goal, but another diving save by Rising. Clearly was rising to the challenge. More offense from the home squad. Sidibe gets control, feeds Harmon, splitting the defense. Goalie challenges, but no chance as you can net the second of the game. And the lead grows to three. And Harmon wasn't done. Off a free kick by Kish. Harmon charges in, takes it away just in front of the keeper, completing his hat trick. Three goals and an assist for Yukon Harmon as the Cardinals flank the bank. One notch. Coon Rapids setting the pace in the first half. Grace Stevenson with a speed down the right side. Fires for the far post, but the Bengals keeper, Tess Enlow, dives to make the save. Cardinals on the attack again. Molly Tarabeza with a nice feed behind the defense. Stevenson again getting the ball, but Enlow comes sliding out to make the save. No score going into the half. We are midway through the second. Free kick from Molly Knobloch. It bounces in a crowd right over the keeper. Not how they drew it up, but Knobloch puts the Cardinals on the board and into the lead. But Blaine, they bounce right back. About five minutes later, ball knocked away right to Ellie Nian. She has room, lofts one that's going inside the post. It's all even with 16 minutes left to play. Well, the Bengals are going to seize the momentum from there. Kendall Stadden in the midst of the host of defenders able to find enough space to launch a left footer against the grain just inside the post again. All of a sudden, Blaine leads two to one. And they weren't done. Inside the final five, Stadden chips one behind the defense that springs Jordan Pascarella in on a breakaway. She makes it count. Three unanswered put Blaine firmly in control late in the game. Nice goal there. Well, the Cardinals are going to get back within one. Coming up here, another free kick by Knobloch. This time, Anna Kepke able to get the header on and direct it to the net with 2.43 on the clock. But that's unfortunately how it would end. Blaine's going to hold on for the 3-2 win. <laughs>